Willie D Live. What's up, family? A New York man said goodbye to his mother as he left her Brooklyn apartment and hopped into a ride share headed to the airport on his way to Columbia. That was in late February. About one month later, he returned to New York in a body bag. As she had requested him to do, 31-year-old Omar Watson sent his mother a message after his first day in Botaga on February 24th. And the second day, and the third day, he did not check in on the fourth night. So she called him instead. It was the last time she heard his voice in the early afternoon on February 29th, less than two days after that phone call. Omar Watson was found dead in the bathroom of his Airbnb. His American passport was on a wooden dresser near the apartment unit entrance, according to a report from police investigators in Botaga. But his phone, iPad, and wallet had vanished, his mother said. And so began a five-month ordeal to unravel the mystery on how her only child, died in an unfamiliar country more than 2,000 miles away. Without her son's phone, which likely would have offered clues, the grieving mother was left to wonder. Omar was an unmarried online stock trader and entrepreneur. His mother said that he was an avid solo traveler and had made many successful trips to Japan, Brazil, Mexico, and France. After his one week stay in Colombia, she said he had planned to travel to Portugal. She said he just wanted to see the world. Now, let's fast forward this thing. She rehashed their last phone conversation over and over in her head, she said. He told her he'd vomited and had diarrhea for a few days. She asked him, did, she, did he want her to come and get him and bring him back to the States. And he said, yes, at first, but then he called back and said, no, he was cool. And then after she didn't hear from him that night, she got worried. And two days later, she get the dreadful call that he was dead. They found him in the bathroom. She has no idea what's going on. They contact the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. Embassy told them back in March that they would have autopsy results in about three months. Now check this out. He gets killed in February. They call it a natural death. But he gets killed in February. His body arrives back in New York in March. They're still in the dark about what's going on. His suitcase is returned. Inside the suitcase is women clothing, a petite woman's clothing. So they don't suspect that he was doing any cross-dressing or anything like that. They suspect that perhaps he went to see a woman but she, the mother said he made no mention of a woman, right? So they're totally in the dark. Somebody could have thrown some women's clothing inside of the suitcase to throw off the scent. Or perhaps he was there and there was some woman in his presence. We don't know. What we do know is this that after a lot of prying, the family discovers that, or they're told by the embassy that the autopsy results came in in April. So all this time they're in the dark and the Columbia authorities have the autopsy results and they didn't share them with the family. So who wants to travel to Columbia? Here's what you need to know before you do. 
Colombia is an increasingly popular tourist destination for Americans and other international travelers. From January to June this year, more than a quarter of foreign visitors to Colombia were from the U.S., according to the nation's tourism ministry. But traveling to Colombia does come with major risk, especially if you're black, because Colombia has a history, just like America, of racism against blacks. Yeah, even in Colombia. Shortly before Omar Watson's visit to Colombia, the U.S. Embassy in Botaga issued a warning about eight suspicious deaths of U.S. citizens between November 1st and December 31st. Last year, the embassy warned that robbers were drugging tourists with scopolamine, nicknamed the Devil's Breath. Forensic investigators in Colombia said the autopsy conducted determined that Omar Watson died of interlobular pulmonary thromboembolism associated with deep right vein thrombosis and determined the cause of death to be natural. Yeah, right. The man goes to Colombia and everything is cool. He's perfectly healthy. All of a sudden, he gets sick and he dies. They check out the apartment and his passport is still there, but his phone is gone. His iPad is gone. His wallet is gone. I'm well-traveled, but I don't just go anywhere, especially without checking out the travel advisory from the U.S. Embassy. Uh-uh, man. I'm not jumping out of the pot into the fire. America is the pot. I'm in the pot right now. I got to move with my head on a swivel right now. I'm not going to another country where I'm not familiar with the terrain and I don't have as many resources and deal with the exact same thing. I don't care about traveling that much. I don't care about vacationing that much. I vacation in my backyard. I don't need to go out and see their buildings and all of that stuff. I don't need to do that. I'll do it, but I don't need to do it. Catch enough hell right here. I'm not going to go somewhere else where I already know they don't like us. Columbia has a history of racism against black folks. They have a history. Why would I leave a country that I was born in that has a history of racism where I already live, where, my, where I'm already going through it, to go somewhere else and deal with that? Some of y'all will take that chance, though. And I hear you, fam. I get it. I understand. You see, you gotta live. You know, you can't live paranoid. You gotta live. You gotta see the world. Safety first. You know, it's cool. Safety first. I think having a travel companion is a good idea. At least you got somebody to look out for. You know, you got. It's a lot harder to get two than one. You know, so if you're gonna move around internationally like take somebody with you man like I don't want to see stuff that bad I'm going on a journey okay you, you want some me time take somebody with you maybe you know y'all live in the same stay in the same hotel or something and a few doors down look man I'm going to be doing my own thing for the next couple of days or whatever I'll see you on this day woo woo Catch up with you in the lobby or whatever. <laughs> but, you know, do your thing. Like, I don't know, fam. Another thing, these Airbnbs, you got to be very careful. They're not as safe as hotels. Hotels have security and a bunch of locks and cameras all over the place. Airbnbs, you're staying at, essentially, you're staying at somebody's apartment. You're staying at somebody else's home. 
that don't offer the same amount of security. You know, I don't feel as safe. You're never completely safe anywhere, not even in your own home. But I just don't feel that level of comfort staying in somebody's house. I'm hopeful that the family will find closure, but I'm not sure they will because I don't think they'll get justice. Columbia has a huge incentive to underreport crime, just as other tourist destinations have. If the word gets out that people are getting robbed, people are getting raped, people are getting murdered in these tourist destinations, tourism's gonna tank and the economy is going to tank. So you have to do your own due diligence before you travel to these foreign destinations. R.I.P. Omar Watson. No more talk.